Democratic Senator Richard Blumenthal serves on the Armed Services Committee and is just back from a trip to Ukraine, as well as a meeting with President Zelensky. He joins me now. Let me pick up with where um, Ambassador Taylor just left off, Senator. In those discussions with uh, President Zelensky, did he convey fears about the potential for annexations? And do you believe that Ukraine giving up territory may be, at this point, the only way to end this war? At this point, Chris, and thanks for having me, the people of Ukraine are in no mood to give up territory. They are as fiercely dedicated to the defense of their country as they have been from the very start. And the eloquent, really emotional appeal to our hearts made by the First Lady of Ukraine is exactly the message that I heard from President Zelensky, the need for air defense to stop that rain of terror from the skies, the missiles that are dismembering and destroying lives. He needs air defense so children can go back to school, people can go back to work, and folks who live in Ukraine can go back to some kind of normalcy in their lives. And here is the point about eastern Ukraine. These people are going to fight to the last person. They will mount an insurgency, a special ops, a guerrilla warfare against those Russian occupiers. So giving up territory at this point is not an option that seemingly is on the table for Ukraine. And ultimately, they are the deciders about what happens in the future of their country. And we should support them with not only more artillery, multiple launch, long range, high Mars and other kinds of artillery, but the air defense that they need adapted to their purposes to make sure that this reign of terror from the skies is thwarted and stopped. So right now, do you believe that the U.S. and our allies have not done enough so that they could mount a legitimate and potentially successful counteroffensive? We need to do more. That's the key question, Chris. What more can we and should we do? I've met with Pentagon officials, intelligence community folks, as well as White House staff. And what we need to do is increase the pace as well as the amount of our deliverables. It's fine for Congress to pass a supplemental. It's great for the Pentagon to say the help is on the way. But I've traveled that rail line from the Polish border to Kyiv, and it goes further to the Eastern Front. We need to put that artillery on those trains, as well as the other munitions and arms that are needed, whether it's tanks or missiles, air defense. All of it needs to go to Ukraine more quickly, and I think they can mount a counteroffensive if they have that help, including, by the way, medical supplies and humanitarian assistance. One side of this is what the U.S. can do for Ukraine. The other half of it, obviously, is, is what can the United States do against Russia. We know that sanctions have had an economic impact in that country, but it does look like Vladimir Putin is still playing the long game here, no matter how many, no matter how many lives are lost. In the category of what we can do against Putin, against Russia, are there still things out there that you think the United States and its allies need to look at? Exactly right. What we need to do, the Senate of the United States, hopefully within days, is to pass a resolution that designates Russia as a state sponsor of terrorism. All but one senator is ready to vote for it right now. Senator Graham and I have offered that resolution. We went to Ukraine, to Kyiv together. We presented the resolution to President Zelensky. His reaction was so emotional, heartwarming, to know that this next step that would designate Russia as a state sponsor of terrorism and impose stronger economic sanctions, stop the doctrine of sovereignty if Russia is sued in this country. We need stronger action against the Russian oligarchs, also a matter before the United States Senate, which I am supporting. There is more that we can do on economic sanctions against Russia that will further cripple its ability to wage this war. And I commend and thank the Biden administration for supporting these efforts. It has been increasingly aggressive in its support for Ukraine and deserves the thanks that the First Lady offered today. Senator Richard Blumenthal, thank you so much for being on the program. We appreciate it.